Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a really special episode for you guys. We're going to be water cooling a Raspberry Pi. Now, some say it's very pointless to water cool a Raspberry Pi, and I say, then why'd you click on this video? So let's get started. So I gotta give a shout out to ModMyMods.com. Now they're the ones that I ordered all the components from. At first when I was on their website, I was a little confused because they have so much stuff going on over there. And I ended up reaching out to customer support. Joe, the CEO from Mod My Mods, actually contacted me back and handpicked all the parts that I needed for this build. So it made it super easy for me. All I needed to do was add to cart and check out. Now I love their customer support and I love their business sense itself. Go check them out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. They also got a YouTube channel that they do their videos and their promos and all the stuff that they build on there. So check that out too. So now let's check out the components that I got. So to start off, we have the Alpha Cool DC. LT2600 ultra low noise 12 volt DC pump. Now you could combo that with this DC LT pump top. Now what this does is actually sits on top of the pump like a biscuit and then gaskets and everything prevent it from leaking and you have two screws to install together. And you can actually just operate the whole loop using these two and not needing a reservoir itself but I opted to get one. So here we have the Alpha Cool DC LT individual reservoir. Now it's much easier if you're gonna fill a loop with the reservoir itself. It's a lot sloppier if you, if you don't have one because you only got a small little hole and a small little opening to put the liquid in and hopefully it fills in enough so you don't keep the air bubbles going. But I opted to get a reservoir, much better setup. Next, we have the Alpha Cool Nexos ST30 full copper 120 millimeter radiator. It's uh, really cool actually. I, I just, I don't know why I like it. It's thin, 120 millimeters. Uh, next we have the five way splitter that actually basically takes the 3 8 uh, tubing and turn it into smaller tubing that fits the core and butter of this. The Alpha Cool MCX1s, which is the CPU cooler for our Raspberry Pi. Next, we have the Barrows 1 4th inch thread, 3 8 interior diameter, 5 8 exterior diameter. I actually got six of them because for my setup I actually needed six. And they're compression fittings. So basically you could take them apart, put the tube in and then twist it to uh, put it back together. Next we have these seals, these little tiny seals just for the five way plugs. Then we have the 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter adhesive pads. It fits perfectly onto these heat sinks. And last but not least, we have these plugs. Uh, basically, it's for the dividers to stop the flow from going and it goes directly into the little tubes. So basically, how a water cooling setup works is the cool water comes from the reservoir, pumps it into the CPU, then it turns it into hot air, hot water. The hot water then goes into a radiator and it gets cooled off by those fins and then the cool air goes right back into a radiator, completing its cycle. All right, so always measure twice, cut once, right? So right now I'm planning how I'm gonna lay out my entire setup. So I have all these pipes ready cut out and I measured everything and the tubing that I need. So before I cue the music, I just wanted to show you what I was doing. Now I'm very impressed with the look on this build as, as you can see with the blue and everything. Now there's a couple of components that I did not add to this that I could have, which is cooling the USB controller. I didn't really find the need to because it doesn't really reach higher temperatures than 36 degrees Celsius. And I'm really overclocking the CPU right now versus anything else. 
Two, I didn't add a fan to it because I didn't find the need to. Since we're just cooling such a small footprint, there's not enough heat to transfer to a radiator to actually make the radiator hot. Now let's get over to a number section and see how well this cools off compared to the conventional heatsink. So as you can see, the numbers on the top left side are for the heatsink. You're going to see that the temps on the stock is 61 degrees Celsius. And if we overclock it to 1.3 gigahertz, 68 degrees Celsius, then 1.35, 71, and 1.4 gigahertz is 82. And it did not finish on 1.45 gigahertz. Now comparing to the water cooled, you see stock is 53 degrees Celsius, then 1.3 gigahertz is 58, then 1.35 is 59, then 1.4 gigahertz is 61. And you can see it's maintaining right around that 60 area and it's very impressive. Now I could feel the comments already, people saying, why? What a waste of time, what a waste of money, why would you even do this, it's pointless. Now we here are hackers and we like to tinker with this stuff. We like to push devices beyond its limit, that's why we're doing this. There's two issues that we have with the Raspberry Pi, one being heat. The CPU gets too hot, so Hey, to eliminate that problem, we're going to water cool it. Number two is the voltage. We only could deliver 1.4 volts to the CPU itself, and that's where our problem is. Now, I found the capacitor where we are able to control or manipulate that voltage to the CPU, and I'm going to be playing around with that and figure out all the kinks and stuff like that before I upload a video. So stay tuned for that. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that, please hit that like button. I have other videos like this on my channel. If you haven't done so, check them out. Please hit that little subscribe button. Helps me a lot. Also gives you notification when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.